Hi, in this video of C language, we are going to start arrays. Basically, array is a very important concept in any programming language as it enables a developer to store a collection, a collection of similar data type elements. As C is a type safe language, so here, whatever data you define is having a data type. And for the same data type, if you want to create a collection, you can define an array which can consist multiple element in a contiguous memory block at the same time. So let's find out what is all here. Uh, it provides a data structure called array. Data structure means when we talk about the bulk of data, it comes like how we are managing to store that data. That is all of the data structure. So here it's a data structure where we can store fixed size sequential collection of elements of same type. When I say same type means homogeneous. If one is integer, all will be integer. If one is double, all will be double. Fixed size means if the size of an array is fixed once, you cannot change its size again. For the beginning, if you set the size is 5, later you cannot put the 6 elements inside. So that is what we call fixed size. Sequential collection means when you define the array, let's say here it is the array, all the elements will be stored in a contiguous memory block. So the element 1, then element 2, in memory they will come in a series of memory blocks, means in a contiguous memory blocks. An array can be defined as a similar data element under single name. Single name means if I said the name of this array is numbers, all the elements inside this array will be a part of numbers array. But anytime when I want to access the individual element, we can access that with an index. As here you can see, under the square brackets, we have passed some numbers, which is nothing but one index. So index is basically, whenever I talk about index in an array, it will begin with the zero, means the first element of an array will be at zeroth index, then one, two, three, and so on. So this is like, uh, this is how you will store the elements. An array consists of continuous memory block location, the lowest address corresponds to the first element, means the zeroth index, and the highest address will be the, for the, for, will be for the last element. So, uh, let's see how we can define an array. So while, while defining an array, while declaring an array, we have to tell the data type as well as the size of the array. So here, as you can see, type, then array name, and then the array size. Here, I have taken double, double is the data type, balance is the name of your array, and 10 means the first index will be of 0th index, and the 10th element will be at the 9th index. And uh, this is how you can define an array. You can, once you have defined the array, next thing comes like how you want to put elements in the array. So let's see how to initialize an array. As here you can see, double balance is equal to, means five is the size. Then after equals to, you can put five values like one, two, three, four, five. When you are initializing the array in this fashion, you can also skip passing the size. Like here you can see, I have not written anything inside this square brackets, but now as many as elements you are passing here, that will be the size of the array. Means by the time you are declaring an array, the size must be specified either by passing the size like this or by inline initializing the array. As I said, it's a fixed size, means once it is defined and the size is fixed, Later, you cannot change, means neither you can decrease nor increase the size of the array. Next thing comes like how you can access the element, the specific element, either for reading or for writing the element on a particular index of an array. So that you can do in this way. As for example, if I want to read the first element from the array, balance is the name of my array. So by passing 0th index, you can get the value. Similarly, if I want to write the value, here it's a variable salary2 and I assign that value in the fifth index, if there are five indexes. 
so this is how you can access these elements similarly if you want to read or write all the elements you can also write a loop for an array rather than passing the hard coded indexes like that so let's see practically what all we can do with the very simple examples of array so in this implementation of single dimensional array you can see i have taken an array of length 5 with the name arr and i have initialized it in line so right after this i have put an equals to operator and then I have assigned 5 values since the length of an array is 5 so only assigning 5 values will be logical if you will pass more values your array will not be readable so those elements will not be readable so to execute the loop I have taken the variable i which will vary from 0 to less than 5 5 which is the length of an array so you can see like the uh, uh, index will be 0 1 2 3 and 4 so similarly as I know that so I will plan my loop according to that so I started my loop with 0 and it will run till less than 5 that is 4 which is nothing but the last element index of the array and here while printing it what I have done is I initialized I just printed index will with the value of i that will print like 0 1 2 3 4 the index along with the value at that particular index so as soon as i will execute this you can see index 0 1 2 3 4 with the respective values now if i want to change the value i can simply do one thing like i can pass a particular index and at that particular index i can change the value like that even I can use this technique in order to initialize the elements of the array so when I will run this you will observe like at index 2 the value got changed to 100 remaining will remain same if you will pass less than 5 values out here in the remaining blocks it will assign a garbage value like here you can see 0 which I have never assigned but still I am getting that and in the same way if I will not initialize it and I'll start reading the values then only at the index 2 I will get the value which I have assigned but in the remaining I will just get the garbage so make sure before reading you will assign the values properly now let's do one more operation like I will put some values in this ar array and now I'll try to sort this particular array when we have the values in the large amount I can go for the techniques like searching and sorting so let's get started with these uh, sorting techniques and for that here I will use a bubble sort so I'll take a couple of more variables like two loops will be there and one temporary variable for storing the intermediate values and now let's write the code so here first of all I have printed the values of array before sorting so it will print in the same order that is 43, 59, 21, 56 and 78 but here what I have done I have done the bubble sorting inside which there is a nested loop one first one is executed by variable i second one the inner one is executed by variable j and you can observe that the outer loop is r running equals to the size of array that is the element uh, is 5 so it will run for the 5 times from 0 to 4 while the inner one is executing one time lesser I have put it here 4 so it will run from 0 to 3 that is 4 times now inside this since j will every time start with a 0 I will check the arr 0 if arr 0 is greater than arr 1 in this case it is not so this condition will be false and will proceed to next condition the j will be incremented j will become 1 and inside we will check if arr1 is greater than arr2 means j plus 1 is 2 so arr1 is greater than arr2 obviously so what I'll do I'll just swap the value means 21 will come here and 59 will come from index 1 to index 2 so this is how the smaller value will come before the bigger value and in the bubble sort we will have to do 5 into 4 iterations for this for the maximum time as per the bubble sort for the array of size n 
you will have to do n into n minus 1 iterations for ensuring that your array is sorted. So probably it will be sorted before that also but I'll execute for the maximum time. And here I have used this ternary operator XOR for swapping the value. You can write any other code for swapping the values. And let's execute it now. So here you will see like initially it was unsorted but later it is sorted like in ascending order that is 21, 43, 56, uh, 59 and then 78. If you want to reverse this direction you can just replace this greater than symbol with smaller than and then it will be sorted as descend in descending order. So this is how you can do some various operations when you have the collection of information or collection of data in, is stored inside a, an array.